Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy Juneteenth. Juneteenth is the oldest national celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. Today, Juneteenth commemorates African American freedom and emphasizes education and achievement. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Well, Welcome, ladies, to Sister Power. Thank you, Sarah. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for joining the show and talking about Juneteenth. Yeah, and so this is such a uh, very, very busy weekend. And we wanted to say uh, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. To the, happy Father's Day. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And so let's just start taking people down and educating mm -hmm. them and inspiring them about mm -hmm. uh, celebrating Juneteenth. And what is Juneteenth? Well, um, hi, thank you for having us today, Sharon. Um, and you know, l let me just start over, because I did not <laughs> introduce my guest, and I don't know what happened with that, um, but I want to introduce to you uh, Sister Power guest. Yes. And we have, um, for I guess, Dr. Marcia Howard yes. and Dr. Deborah Murray. Yes. And Dr. Howard is a special education teacher yes, who I has know. taught students for over 23 years yes. with disabilities, am yes. I correct? Correct. And her love of travel and education has mm -hmm. taken her to many countries, yes. such as France and South Africa yes. and Belgium yes. and many other places. Mm -hmm. yes. And then we have the lovely, very lovely <laughs> Deborah Murray, yes. oh. is a passionate pastor, mm -hmm. yes. preacher, teacher, yes. author, yes. Mm -hmm. and leadership consultant. Yes. And Dr. Murray is the president of Simple Strategy for success and this is a nonprofit organization yes. am I correct and is devoted to skill building mm -hmm. counseling mm -hmm. and micro business development for women with children living in impoverished areas around the world mm -hmm. and so we'll start again Welcome to Sister Power. Thank you, Sarah. Thank it's you. Great to be here. I said we're just sitting here, and I haven't told the audience who are there. Okay. okay, and let's just tell it. Tell the viewers from all over the world what is Juneteenth. Yes, um, I think just to reiterate what you said in the opening, that Juneteenth is uh, the oldest celebrated day that slavery was actually ended. Um, from what we know. Um, during the Emancipation Proclamation that was stated in September, but enacted uh, not until January 1st of 19, 1863, um, the slaves were set free. However, um, in Texas, in Galveston, Texas, the slaves were not notified that they had indeed been set free two years prior. And so they were left to do the free manual labor of um, their masters um, not knowing that they had actually achieved freedom. So now I how long? Mm -hmm. How long did you say they had been freed before? They had not been freed for the two years. Two years. Yeah. That's a good point. So the proclamation came. Yes. Two years prior. Two years but prior. But they were still working. They were still working for their masters. and. So the theory was uh, brought up, why hadn't these people found out that mm -hmm. they were free? Mm -hmm. And some of the theories that, are, uh, that I researched was um, perhaps one person who was designated to tell them mm -hmm. of the good news had been murdered mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the way to mm -hmm. tell mm -hmm. the people of uh, Galveston. The other theory was that um, the news was deliberately withheld from mm -hmm. them so that they can continue providing free labor for uh, their masters and being in subservient positions. Um, and then the third theory was that they wanted to hold the slaves for the one last cotton harvest mm -hmm. that was coming in and didn't want to interrupt that service for them. So um, there were theories as to why didn't these specific people in Texas at the time mm -hmm. hear the news mm -hmm. um, that everyone else had heard two years prior. 
So Juneteenth is now, we commemorate that day um, that the slaves were then told, and that was the final ending of slavery in the United States. Mm. And so Texas uh, deemed the holiday worthy of statewide recognition yes. in 1980. Yes. So that was the first state. Yes, to well, okay, commemorate. To do so. Yes, um, and since then, other states have taken up that uh, observation, except five states that we know of. And what five states? Um, from what I read, the five states were Hawaii, sadly, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Montana, um, North and South Dakota, and oh, there's one more state that I can't remember. Montana. Did you say Montana? Montana. So, yeah, that would be the five. Okay, right. Well, why should. Why should celebrate? Why should we celebrate Juneteenth and Marcia? How is it celebrated, Deborah? Tell us about that. Thank you, Marcia. No for, problem. You know, what is Juneteenth? No we have problem. that. So now, why should we celebrate it, Deborah? Well, we should celebrate it because um, we're free. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and to add yeah. on to that, um, I think the fact that. It is a commemoration of what the mindset of slave owners and those who had the power at the time continue to think that uh, human labor was warranted by Africans and African Americans. So I think we need to commemorate that um, indeed we are free and that we deserve to be free mm -hmm. and that we have um, inalien inalienable rights. Mm -hmm that were giving to us as human beings. Yeah, so when I was talking about us being free, oftentimes we take this freedom for granted. Mm. And so when we sit with this moment of mm. Juneteenth and reflect mm. on a time when we as a people mm. could not have freedom of expression, we didn't have control or agency of our own body. Mm -hmm. People thought for us instead of us having the ability to think for ourselves. And so now mm -hmm. I can sit here on television. On television. On television. Yes. Yes. Talk to the world. Oh my goodness, my ancestors. Yes. My ancestors are rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is a day they hoped for. Mm. Some died never receiving this promise mm -hmm. that they would be free. Yeah. And so we celebrate reflecting and remembering that many gave their lives for this freedom mm. that you and me and you, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. can enjoy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that that is such a rejoicing moment. Yeah. And we're we're sitting here today, not one, but two, three African American queens. Yes. And we're able to tell our stories. Yes. You know, it's awesome. You know, uh, Marcia um, has her PhD. Yes, yes. I have a, a PhD in special education. Uh, from the University of Hawaii at Manoa in exceptionalities. So uh, I am blessed to have and carry one of the, no, the highest degree in the land in the United States and across the world. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there's nowhere to go after you receive your doctorate. You can just get other doctorates, but <laughs> you can get more. The but. highest. So, so when I think about my sister telling me that she was a sharecropper, and she's not that old. Mm. But my mother and my father mm. were sharecroppers. Wow. I mean, they picked cotton, and she had a little cotton sack as a child. And to think that my four parents mm -hmm. didn't have this opportunity, so when I graduated and received my doctorate, I received it in honor of that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I felt each and every one of them rejoicing. I recently went to Africa, mm -hmm. and as I was there, I stood up and I preached in a church, and I felt a full circle of coming home, mm -hmm. you know, because they always wanted to come home, to come back to Africa, and they didn't get a chance. Yeah. And there I was standing there as someone who had been taken, 
and now I'm home and with all of this freedom and these liberties and education mm -hmm. making them proud. Back to the motherland. Awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. What a Good. story. Good. And you're going to just lead us into the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, yes, yeah, so on this day around the world, mm -hmm. people celebrate. And before they celebrate, they listen to the Emancipation Proclamation and they listen to what's considered um, General Order Number Three. Mm -hmm. And the Emancipation Proclamation is pretty lengthy. Mm -hmm. But I just want to connect you with the words, a few words, okay. that Abraham Lincoln said. Ooh. So Abraham Lincoln said that the executive will on the first day of January aforesaid, by proclamation, mm -hmm. designates the states and parts of the states and any in which the people thereof respectively shall then be in rebellion against the United States, and the fact that any state or the people thereof shall on that day be in good faith represented in Congress of the United States by the members chosen thereto at elections, wherein a majority of the qualified voters of such state have participated. And, and that was important because now mm. we had an executive order by the president. And he said this as the commander in chief yes. uh, over the war. Mm -hmm. yes. But it had to be ratified mm -hmm. through Congress. Yes. And so, you know, that's another reason to celebrate is because we know it's not always easy mm -hmm. to get unification yes. <laughs> of, you know, our um, system. So Congress actually ratified it as well. And Abraham Lincoln says, by virtue of the power in me vested as commander in chief mm. of the army and navy of the United States in time of actual armed rebellion mm. against the authority and the government of the United States proclamation. And as a fit and necessary war measure for suppressing this rebellion, mm. therefore on this first day in January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, in accordance with my purpose, mm. I do publicly proclaim for the full period from this day above mentioned, an order that designates hmm. freedom. Freedom. Right. And we're going to talk more about right. Juneteenth celebration when we come I'm back. I love, I love that. <laughs> love that. that. Awesome. We'll be back. Are you tired of sleepwalking through life? Are you dreaming of a healthier, wealthier, happier you? You're not alone, and that's why thousands of people tune in each week to watch R.B. Kelly on Out of the Comfort Zone, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Make a change, get the help you need, and stop sucking at life. The Army, we're about to go live. Oh. Hello, it's 1 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, and I'm your host, R.B. Kelly. Welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha.
Welcome back to Juneteenth. And my special guest is Dr. Deborah Murray and Dr. Marcia yes. Howard. And we're yes. talking about the Juneteenth celebration. And Deborah, how do we continue the legacy? And before you answer that, what is the significance in 2018? Mm. Let's talk about mm. the significance of Juneteenth in 2018. Oh, wow. Do you want me to go first? Or do you yeah. <laughs> Either one of you. Either well, one of you. Before you share, I will just wanted to say that um, when Juneteenth was happening uh, years ago, um, when the people first found out, how they would commemorate it yes. is yes. they would have uh, barbecues, they would mm -hmm. have uh, rodeos, mm -hmm. they would cook their best foods and mm -hmm. present it to the mm -hmm. community, um, where it was just a gathering where people would come mm -hmm. and hear about the stories, mm -hmm. uh, just like you shared about your mm -hmm. sister and oh, your mom yeah. and dad. Mm -hmm. um, and then just uh, one thing that really st stood out to me was how they used to take off of their uh, their old rags yeah, and their old yeah, clothes yeah. and throw them into the lake uh -huh. and get the new clothes. Mm -hmm. Most of what the uh, old masters mm -hmm. had left because a lot of them fled the South mm -hmm. now that the uh, blacks were free because there was no one to do their labor. Mm -hmm. So they lost a lot of money and had to, mm -hmm. you know, gather up their things and leave. And so the slaves would don the master's clothing, the mm -hmm. finest threads, and have this big elaborate mm -hmm. picnic. And um, that's what they still do today. Yeah, and, and, and we're celebrating, and yeah. I'm, I'm so excited that Honolulu, uh, Hawaii, yes. is, is celebrating. Yes. Um, uh, there are yeah. all type of various mm -hmm. Juneteenth celebrations, because we have parades and concerts mm -hmm. and storytelling. And I know that there is a uh, special Juneteenth celebration at um, mm -hmm. Kapi'olani Park. Yes. yes. And it's in t by the Popola Project, and yes. it's entitled um, Get Free. Mm -hmm. and it's Saturday, June 16th at Kapiolani Park uh, for an afternoon of music and cultural art from across the African diaspora. Yes. Uh, you, you bring your ohana. They want you to bring mm -hmm. your grill. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. And it is kid-friendly. Yes. Good. And, the, and, you, and there's a picture of it right there, Get Free, Juneteenth, awesome. 2018 at Kapiolani Park. And it's going to be at the picnic area 7, dressed across from Kaimana, Kaimana Beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right from 1 to 5 p.m., and they're having drumming and dancing. And tell yes. us about your organization that you started. Yes. Um, uh, so, Marcia. Sewa Fade, West African Dancing and Drumming, will participate in the Juneteenth celebrations. We will be at Trinity Baptist Church uh, performing at 3 o'clock with live African drumming and dancing. So we're excited about that. But Trinity will have um, games and yeah. festivities mm -hmm. starting at 12 o'clock mm -hmm. until 5 p.m., I believe. Woo! Yes. There's a lot to do on that. Saturday. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, one of the reasons why that's really significant is because um, after the proclamation was enacted, the Jim Crow laws came up. And one of the things that happened in the Jim Crow laws mm. was that blacks, people of African descent, could not congregate in public places. Right. And so this reclaiming of the public place, this reclaiming of the park, mm -hmm. a place that if you were even seen in the park, oh. that you could be arrested, mm -hmm. you know, you could be beaten. Mm -hmm. So um, these celebrations are important to have in public places mm -hmm. because it also represents, I'm free, I really am free. And you know, I'm glad you did bring that up because mm -hmm. we were discussing earlier during the break that you were saying that people were arrested, mm -hmm. you know, celebrating Juneteenth. And unfortunately, we have something similar to that going on right now yeah. that people are calling the police on yeah. us um, for, yes. you, we were talking about just it, Marcia, by just living, being there. Just yeah. by being there. And mm -hmm. so it seems that we are regressing tremendously where we have this freedom because of the Emancipation Proclamation. But years now, here we are in 2018 and, you know, African Americans can't meet at coffee houses, we can't have mm. barbecues in the park, mm. we can't uh, go to Airbnbs, uh, we can't, mm. it just seems like we are regressing to where being African American is just another big target where we can't escape just being 
Just being. Just being. Just being who we are and doing what we do. And so there has to be a coming together and a commemoration of, again, what did we go through? Mm -hmm. um, what can we do to make it better? Mm -hmm. How can we continue to strive for the betterment of not just African Americans, but all of those yes. that are being marginalized? Mm -hmm. uh, last month, there was a man who uh, berated a Hispanic woman. Yes for speaking in a deli right. because he didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing that not just against African Americans, but sadly just against people of color. Yeah, brown people, brown yes. people and black people. Yes. And you know, before we get started, I know that the we what ha we have a poem, but before we move forward, the Honolulu African American Film Festival, we are having something for Juneteenth, and it's Jules Catch One, and I mm -hmm. wanted to put that out there for everyone to please come, and maybe there's a, later on we'll, we'll show Jules Catch One, yes. and there it is on the screen. It is Saturday, June 16th, 7.30 p.m., uh, with June Thias Williams at the Doris Duke Theater, right. and this is one woman, one city, no fear for for 42 years, and why this is so important, because we're talking about how people are marginalized. Uh, Jules Catch One, um, this timely documentary distributed by Ava DuVarnay's Array releasing chronicles the mm. country's oldest black-owned disco and the legacy of businesswoman, activist, and healer. And this was the place that anyone, you know, any, whoever you, whoever you may be, no matter what color, uh, your gender, you could come and get your party on. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be Saturday night at the, at the Doris Duke Theater, and we want everyone to please come awesome. out and support that. Awesome. Yeah, and but, there was yeah. one more uh, show. Monday. Yes. At the yes. At the Manoa at Theater. At the Manoa Valley yes. Theater. Yes. Uh, the uh, director. Flying West. Yes. Flying West. Pearl. Talking about yes. Pearl Cleage. Uh, I can't remember her last name. Her name, name but is if Pearl. You look at the Manoa Valley uh, Theater webpage. It is on Monday yes. at seven thirty. Seven thirty. And it's mm -hmm. discussing about the mm -hmm. blacks uh, or African Americans who were traveling west to Kansas. Kansas and, and we're giving homestead. Yes, yes. We're giving homestead yes. land. It's a six-person show, I yes. believe. So if you can come out to Manoa Valley Theater to support the sister, that would be great. Yeah, just come out. And I think we have a, a, a poem that you would like to share. Yeah, so this poem is by Robert Hayden, and it's called Renegade, Renegade. Okay. And I'm just going to read this section because, again, after the slaves were freed, many of them uh, wanted to find their families that were mm -hmm. in neighboring counties or neighboring states. And a lot of them were free, but didn't know what to do with that freedom. You know, they had been forbidden to read, to write, to travel. And so now, with this freedom, they wanted to find their families. So, okay. so in this poem... I think poem, you just made an important point. Mm -hmm. okay. That it is thought that sometimes families were together. But that's They not were not together. They were yes. sold off. Yes. And so in this poem by Robert, um, Robert Hayden, Renegade, Renegade, it says, no more auction blocks for me, no more drivers lash for me. Mm -hmm. If you see my Pompeii, 30 years of age, new breeches, plain stockings, Negro shoes, and if you see my Anna, likely young mulatto, branded E on her right cheek and R on the left, mm -hmm. catch them if you can mm -hmm. and notify subscriber. Mm -hmm. Catch them if you can, but it won't be easy. They'll dart underground and when you try to catch them and plunge into quicksand. Whirlpool mazes turn into scorpions when you try to catch them. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Mm -hmm. So this just commemorates that when the slaves were free, they tried to get to the Northern Line yes. to join the Union yes. armies, to be free, and to gather their people together to be a family once again. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And, and Dr. Murray, yeah. just give us some motivating and inspiring mm. and educate our people and to let them know this is a time to celebrate. Yes. You know, yes. we've got you know a couple of minutes left and we want to leave our people with, number one, we have uh, an event, Get Free, at mm -hmm. Kapiolani Park mm -hmm. from right. 1 to 5. Yes. Definitely come out there. Yes. And it, we have one at, at Trinity, Trinity from 12 mm -hmm. to, to 5. 12, 12 to with Trinity African Baptist dancing Church. at 3 o'clock. Right. And then we have, to end the evening, we 
we have Jules Catch One awesome. at the Honolulu Museum of Arts, Doors Duke Theater, and it's been put on by the Honolulu African American Film Festival. Awesome. But just lead us out, you know, you have a, a minute, you have a minute, and then we'll close. I just like to say, um, this is another reading that used to be read. Mm -hmm. And it's called We Rose. Mm. From Africa's heart, we rose. Mm -hmm. Already a people, our, feast, our faces ebon, our bodies lean, mm -hmm. we rose. Skills of art, life, beauty, and family. Mm -hmm. Crushed by forces we knew nothing of, but we rose. Mm. Survive we must, and we did. Mm -hmm. We rose. We rose to be you. Mm. We rose to be me, and above everything expected. Mm. We rose. Yes. Yes. To become the knowledge we never knew, we rose. Dream, act, we did. Act we must so that we all can rise. Hallelujah. Awesome. awesome. I am just a blessed to be in today's world of living where I can see our first African American president, mm. where we can see many um, African Americans becoming uh, Congress members, senators. We just had the first African American mayor yes. of California. In California. Yeah, London Breed. Mm -hmm. And so we just have to keep going as this poem says, we rose and we are still mm -hmm. rising. Yes, yes. I love that. And I'm so mm -hmm. thrilled that Dr. Murray is here with us, and Dr. Marcia Howard. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. Sister Sarah. This was an awesome I, opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. so thrilled. I'm so very overjoyed right Thank now. You. And we want to leave the audience. Please come and please yes. celebrate. Yes. And come learn about it if you don't know yes. anything about Judy. Yes. Yeah, These come. would be good places to learn about. Bring yes. your family, bring your children. Yes. And on that note, Oceans of Aloha. Peace and love.